just basically this um, distributed heap of agents sending messages to other agents causing effects and where the agent's response to a message is only according to the agent's behavior, which is to say all interaction is voluntary. Um, uh, the The thing that I think, in retrospect, um, was why Nick and I continued to have the argument and not able to resolve it, is he was focused on very wide multi-party contracts like money. Right? In order to have a money, there's tremendous numbers of people that have to agree to play in the same money. And um, uh, where the quorum that defines the money is obviously something that has to be open and evolve over time. There can't, there, there, it's not like there's a ahead of time agreed set of participants. Uh, and I think that the, the kind of blockchain mechanism that um, you know, modern cryptocurrencies show is actually wonderful for that. Um, uh, and uh, likewise, as, as Nick kept saying to me, uh, uh, for general title companies, um, which is, you know, since you're, you're, you, the, the transfer of title to a property from one party to another has to be something for which there's a very, very wide, agree there needs to be very wide agreement on the, the legitimacy of a given set of title records. Um, now, many contracts are contracts between small numbers of parties and for which the participants in the contract are much more knowable ahead of time, or at least the evolution of the participants is something where the participants have set up rules ahead of time as to how the, the, the set of participants evolves over time. Uh, and I think uh, for those kinds of contracts, um, uh, having to do what Ethereum does, of placing them all on a single global blockchain is doesn't seem to me like a good mechanism. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, Nick's criticism that saying that every contract we have to become vulnerable to a mutually third part, a mutually trusted third party that might not might not in fact be trustworthy and can therefore disrupt the integrity of the contract has a problem. Um, and um, uh, as I understand, um, you know, what Jorge explained to me as to the foundation of sort of the new the new agorics. Uh, is uh, that the, uh, I'm going to put it in my own terminology, and, um, that the contract host, the virtual machine on which a set of participants in the contract run the contract, is a virtual machine in the sense of the Ethereum virtual machine. It's a virtual machine that is not run by one party. It does not exist in one place. It's synthesized by um, protocol among the participants in the contract. So because the participants in the contract synthesize it, uh, and the rules about what it's supposed to be doing, which is executing the agreed contract code by the rules of the underlying agreed virtual machine specification, uh, because that's an objective evolution of the state of the contract, um, it should be the case that generally the participants can all agree on how the state of the contract evolved. And if there's a dispute, the dispute is objectively resolvable by third party arbitrators that the participants in the contract had agreed on ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And the result is that I think you end up with the best of both worlds. That you end up with this um, transforming away the, the vulnerability to a mutually trusted third party but doing it locally per contract as opposed to globally for a single sequential virtual machine that has to carry all contracts and reveal all contract states, all participants. That's perfect.